What's up, guys? Hey, how you doing? A great day to be on Note School TV, man. It it That's is. It. It is. I, I I started a phone call this morning and uh, somebody said, how is it today? And I said, well, not surprised, but always happy to see if the sun came up in Dallas Fort Worth this morning. So uh, uh, we're, we're going to live to fight another day. So, Eddie, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit of our, our, our guest, uh, Jeremy, today and what we're going to be talking about? Uh, Jeremy is one of our favorites, and that is because he's just such a nice guy. Um I remember very well the first class that Jeremy came to and uh, his dad came. His dad is an engineer and Jeremy was an active real estate investor and we'll hear his story. But Jeremy's sitting there. Jeremy looked so young. I wasn't sure he wasn't in high school. Yes. <laughs> and uh, now that wasn't the case, but but he looks young and uh uh, he is a smart cat, a good guy, and I'm really excited that we're going to get to hear uh, a story of somebody that took a idea and took what Note School was able to help him with and really went and executed well. So uh, you guys bring him on, Jeremy Scott. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How hey, are man. you? Good, doing very well, doing very well. Um, well, you're growing a beard now, so you don't look quite yeah. so young. <laughs> I would have shaved if I knew you were going to say that, so I could look even younger. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good trait. My daughter is 32, as you would know, and and she looks, uh, she does some acting and commercials and stuff, and she actually can play a teenager. <laughs> Seriously, that's what you know. So it's pretty funny. So yeah, I totally get that, and it's a great trait. And if you're you get old like me, then you're glad you look young, right? <laughs> that's right. Right. For those well, ones you know, so was, all right. So look, you uh, first of all, tell tell a little bit of your story, like just like like a little bit of the journey you were on before you got here. And then we'll kind of go through a sequence of things. So so just a little bit so people can get a sense of who you are and how you what where you were at the point that like note school became a thing that you need you needed to consider. Absolutely. Uh, and I remember it clear as day. It, I had just started. So I've been a traditional realtor since 2014. Um, it was 2017. So I've been in the game for three going on four years. Um, I had flipped a, a couple houses with a friend of mine starting in 2015. And I was, you know, when we, Joe and I were talking about this, I mean, it's like I hear Eddie's words still, you know, hey, if you're getting one out of 20 deals, that's great. Don't change anything. But if I can help you get two or three extra and, and show these different methods. That's when I was like, huh, okay, I'll, I'll listen to this. I'll give it a shot. Oh, well, and then obviously you, you listen to the videos and, and then it's, you know, go further. And then I went to the class and uh, that three day intensive was extremely informational. Um, and really just the, what you, you, I learned in that small time frame gave me the confidence to move forward um, with note school. And I know they had the different packages, but if I'm going to do it, I was like, let's do it right. And <laughs> went with the platinum. Very glad I did. Um, but anyway, that's that's really what got me into note school in general. It was coming across that video. Hey, if you can convert one extra deal, two extra deals, I mean, that would quite literally double your business if you're doing one deal a month. So that hit at home for me big time. And the traditional real estate stuff, I'm thankful for it. I'm grateful for it. But it is rough. <laughs> It's just you're you're working for people. They want you to work ridiculous hours. They want you to be here and drop it, you know, a hat. And the investment side of things, you don't have to do that. Um, yeah. Sometimes when you, you like traditional real estate. You mean brokerage? You're 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 a realtor. Correct. Correct. So that was at the time. Now I'm actually a broker and sponsor 15 agents. I have two in training. Um, and at the time, there was only two of us, but. Um, so a lot has happened and really since joining Note School, but Note School has just been one of the, the mentorship things is what I teach my agents has been huge for, you know, my business. And, and like you guys said, putting it in right away to, I mean, not to get too much, but as far as just simple flip deals, I mean, I thought it was, hey, you got to pay them cash and you got to be the highest price. No, <laughs> not at all. You can get real, real creative. Um, but my mind didn't even comprehend these things until Note School. So your attraction originally to note school was to learn creative financing so you could buy more properties. So you could 
pay cash at a discount when that would work and buy properties at a higher price, but on terms, right? Correct. When, when, and to have a plan A and a plan B. What you didn't think about what you came when you came to note school was what is now turned out to be an incredible endeavor, which was the whole concept of could I find passive money and, and then own my own bank, so to speak. Right. I mean, I, the raising capital thing, I knew it was a need and a necessity. I just hadn't gotten there yet. But how can you scale your business without having the access to that capital? And then your guys' training and be able to go to that. I mean, like Joe was saying at the beginning, going back to the meetup uh, that we had at the, the Known Expo, and we sat at that round table. I mean, it's guys that were substantially older than me. Um, but I was like, hey, I know I got a, a, you know, not a cult following, but a following where I could pitch this to and be consistent with it. Um, but I did not realize, I mean, my main goal too was just to, hey, get out there and broker notes. But, you know, the meetup has provided so much more ad advantages than I even imagined. And I'm talking just simple business, simple transactions, people who are like, hey, the note thing's great, or hey, I want to get involved in your rehab projects. Um, it's that that part has been amazing uh, with raising the capital. All right, so let's do this, Jeremy. Let's. I, I want to stay specific to 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 take the audience today to like what this journey has looked like for you. You came to Note School. We had good stuff. You liked it. We taught you some stuff. I want. I want to. I want to. I want to laser focus in on on what you've done to get this result. Okay, now. I appreciate the fact you give notes school credit for it, but I want to talk about what you've done, right. like what your steps are. And so, um, so once you, once you get people to give you passive money, you can decide to take that money and put that not expensive money, not hard money loan, but, but, but that soft money, you can put that against a real estate deal. You can put it against a note. There's a lot of different ways you can decide to, to apply that money. But I want to talk about specifically today, how you started presenting to investors and what their response was to you. So let's talk about specifically that. What did you do? And like, what were those beginning steps? Absolutely. Okay. So we were at the round table, leaving from there. Here's what you got to go do, taking their advice. Dave Frenecki had been doing his meetup. Um, I believe Justin was the other guy's name, had been doing it successfully. Um, so they just, I took their advice and they said, hey, go out and do this, host your meetup. Um, you got to have a, a follow up system and you got to have a way to advertise it. So, what I specifically have done is Facebook is the easiest, it's the freest. <laughs> and meetup.com, I do do as well, and Eventbrite. Um, those are very inexpensive, in my opinion and it gets people that I wouldn't have normally got um, that will reach out and join the meetup. And I've definitely got private lending from uh, meetup.com. And I think it's like 30 bucks a month. So to me, that's worth it. We started out going, I live on Trophy Club Country Club. We started going to the Trophy Club uh, Country Club. Well then, and we started doing these in November, December. December or January uh, was the first one. And so COVID hit relatively soon <laughs> right after that um so we stopped doing our in-person ones but it's like i don't want to stop doing this i definitely want to continue so we went straight virtual we started doing it once a month uh on facebook facebook live um we do it at 11 a.m every second thursday of the month and we have done that every single time we've never strayed it's just that's what my advisors in the beginning at the table said pick a date be consistent with it uh and some people want to work at night um, my, I want to cater to the daytime people and then also get nighttime, but I got a family that I wanted to spend time with. So it, but like they said, you can do it at the night, you can do the weekend. Um, that's just what worked the best. So we had a really good turnout. The first one, we had 14 people there. Um, and I advertised the heck out of it. I shared it probably four or five times starting six weeks in advance. Um, so that was, that was very helpful. And people are like, huh, this is interesting. It's different. Like nobody else is really doing this. 
so they came out. We had a good following in the, in the very first meeting. Uh, I'm telling you, she through meetup.com. Um, I won't share her name, but um, she has been a, a, a private lender ever since that, that first day. Um, and since then, more people have, have come out and people who have been interested in notes. And we've brokered a few notes and stuff like that as well. Um, but really what we're doing now is Facebook Live. Uh, Eddie, you would know where this is. We're, we're kind of looking to target actually uh, getting back in person uh, in Robson Ranch. Um, it's like a 55 and older golf community. Yeah. Um, so that's where we're actually going to start hosting them. Um, probably starting next month, if not the month after. And then keep doing the online thing, but start doing it two, two times a month um, just to get more exposure. Uh, and then maybe do one the same thing. Because I've done the same PowerPoint presentation meetup over and over and over. And I've catered it and made it better. And uh, fortunately, my social de media department, a.k.a. lovely wife, uh, <laughs> has, has made that PowerPoint look <laughs> quite a bit better. So that, that's been helpful. Um, but as far as the, the, the structure of it, uh, I will start advertising through Meetup. I put it on my Facebook. And I actually uh, have advertised notes now in my – once a week, I will send out a note on my Facebook uh, and share it. And I – teaching my agents what it is. And it's like, hey, I will pay you a commission if you find me some people who want to buy notes um, and just, just work in all the angles that way. Um, but as far as the structure and whatnot, I'd say Facebook meetup and uh, in-person is the best, but Facebook Live has worked really, really well uh, if you don't think anybody would show up to your event. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so we've had a lot of, uh, a lot of students that have kind of carved this path so by the time you came along, kind of our ecosystem of students could help you with that and what they had already tested and proven. And we have obviously helped perfect the communication, the sequence of how you introduce it to investors. And uh, so tell me who they are. What What is a passive investor? What do they look like? If we saw one at the grocery store, would they, would they have a special... Uh, <laughs> Or like, how do I don't know what do they look like? They would probably have a mask on still. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they 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 come in all shapes, colors, and sizes, <laughs> genders as well. Uh, I heard there's more than two now, but basically they they everybody comes and um, they're all different facets of life. Um, I have people that are engineers. I have people that are uh, they work on pipelines. I have uh, someone who's in the car business does really well in the car business and has too much capital, which is a good problem to have. Uh, getting, well, kind of my goal has been is put myself in front of people that have too much capital and then show them how you can help them put it, put it to work. And there's not just one method, hey, this is the only way. It's you tell me what your desires and goals are and we'll figure out the best solution for it. But to get back to your main question, what do they look like? Um, it's not all just dentists and, and uh, doctors because that's what I – you know, Ben has done really, really well at his thing, and he's got a really good. So, yes. one of the questions I had when I was a young guy just starting is like, "How do I get going?" Right? I got to go meet a bunch of doctors and dentists. It's like, no, people have money on all facets of life, um, and, and people are high earners, people are low earners, and savers. It just really depends. Uh, but it's it's mainly casting out those lines with Meetup and Facebook, and and you know, trying to reel in the the catfish and then the bass and then the bluegill. <laughs> um, we want them all. So I want to talk, I mean, we, we've made a lot of noise about burnout landlords because we found a lot of people bought rentals and really weren't positioned for the work involved in a rental. So what do you find with passive investors that show up at your group? Are they, are they former landlords? Is that never the case? What, what's that look like? Very much the case. There's a good amount of tire burnout landlords in there. And then you get other people who will have some sort of knowledge of the note industry that will show up. And then you'll have the people who literally don't know a dang thing, um, you know, at all. And so that's what the goal of my presentation is to keep it basic, but very meaty, if that makes sense. So we get into the meat and potatoes, but we don't get super, super into it because you can get off track for that person who has no knowledge and then the person who will just talk days of notes and business that person you want to schedule a follow-up and it's kind of a legit excuse to give you a reason to to reach back out to them afterwards 
and say, hey, we wanted to talk about that thing. Let's schedule a time. Um, and I do follow up Zooms mainly. Um, sometimes we go to coffee and all that, but it's just easier to do Zoom with so much going on. So when you have a group, you have to manage the questions a little bit. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, yeah. Or that smart guy will try to discredit you very quickly. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a name for him, by the way. <laughs> we, we know that guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, um, they, they are alive and well. Well, you know, uh, so, so, but once again, you, what you're saying is, is when you're having your group meeting, you don't turn it into a Q and A scenario, right? You, you pull them offline because they're going to have different levels of knowledge or different levels of communication. And let's be fair about it. Sometimes you get a guy at a meeting and he's going to be the smartest guy in the room and you can't let him go take over the seminar, so to speak. Right. Right. They, those, those are just people management techniques that, it didn't take you long to learn, right? Right, right. Had a little bit of uh, people business beforehand, but yes, there's definitely the, the the smart guy. And there's, especially my first one, there was a guy like that. And I, I remember I just being nervous, like, oh man, <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question, but it was almost like God ordained. I mean, the first thing that popped out of my head was, you know what? Uh, we'll do a follow up and I'll get you the answers to all those questions after this. But for time's sake, we don't have enough time to get into that right now. And that put him back on his heels, comfortable, and followed up with him afterwards. Still working him, still following him. And that was the very first meeting, still following up with that guy. That guy will never give you any money. Yeah, I'm kind of starting to realize that. <laughs> I can tell you right now that the guy that will give you money is not going to ask you hard questions. The guy that sits in there and has got to be the smartest guy in the room and has got to show you how smart he is, he's not a passive investor, right? So right. people are so worried sometimes about can I, you know, now I'm not saying you don't need information. I believe note school prepared you for the journey, okay? But I have note school students ask me sometimes about, oh my God, what do I do and stuff? And I said, the guy that is passive investor is not going to interrogate you. Right. Guy that wants to be a passive activity, but an active investor's return will interrogate the heck out of you, right? He wants he wants all your money, but he doesn't want to do the work. He just wants to ask you about the work you're doing. So that, that those are development techniques, Jeremy. That now you totally get, and I'm just sort of telling the audience, we know that we know how to 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 help you position it in a way to get past what seems like that barrier of, oh my God, they're going to interrogate me to death. Right. So, and and, and, and you know, one of the things you told me, Jeremy, was that you, you were worried about a question that was like, so how many of these have you done? How many notes have you done? And, and I thought your answer to that was really good. And, you know, basically tell us what you said, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Cause that is that the one that Eddie just talked about. And then Joe, those are the two biggest fears that I had going into it. How am I going to answer those two questions? And the thing I said is we are, uh, we, we work with a group that has done multi-billion dollars worth of notes over the years. They are the experts in the industry. So even though we're relatively new to this, um, once we realized uh, the expertise that they had, uh, we wanted to get in as quick as possible. And then people were like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's uh, you have done a great job. Now you've you've raised about two million bucks. Not quite two, um, but but we are getting very very close to there. Uh, but it's nice, and, and again, I want to encourage the person who's at my stage two years ago, like do it because the compounding that's happening now of all the grunt work that's been put in over the last, you know, and, and Joe called me out too. I took some time off during COVID. He's like, "What? Well, you got to get back on that, man." I was like, "You're right." <laughs> yeah. So. Um, I did. And again, I'm so happy I, I've done it again. But the, the point is, people will start reaching out to you if you stay consistent. Um, and I, I get people who just, hey, you know, I haven't talked to them in 10 years. And they're like, you know, which is a third of my life. But uh, <laughs> they're just like, what are you what are you doing? What is this stuff? And I've, I've been saying, I challenge you, anybody, put pen to paper and look at a rental portfolio and vacancy rates and what it's cost to do stuff. Put pen to paper. And I challenge you. Uh, mathematically, because you cannot disprove this, um, you know, that this return is better. And I had a buddy reach out to me uh, about a month and a half ago and said, man, 
I have aimlessly tried to prove you wrong, but I can't. Like that, that is way better than <laughs> investing in in a rental portfolio. And I was like, even with the appreciation, you can bank in, you know, that that in there. So it, it's let that be an encouragement to you guys. The mathematics will prove itself, but you've got to go through the education and learn note school and watch the videos more than once uh, in order to to get it all. It's easy.